Hi, I'm Rob McRae. I'm here in Castlegar, British Columbia, Canada, where I've created this video I call What the Fungi? Today, I'll be talking about rust fungi. When people think about rust, they think about corroded metal, oxidized iron. Well, that's fair enough. If there's a group of fungi, the rust fungi, named after rusted iron, because at some stage in their life cycle, they're rusty orange. Hair rust forms characteristic rusty orange leaf spots. There's a Saskatoon berry bush. If you look carefully, you'll see that a few of the berries uh, are infected with the Saskatoon berry rust fungus. They're orange with strange, almost alien rows of spore-bearing structures emerging from the fruit. Black hawthorn berries are parasitized by a rust fungus that produces spore-bearing structures similar to those on Saskatoon berries. Here's some normal berries, and look at the rust fungi. Hodgepole pine is common in BC. It's affected by a rust fungus that causes growths or galls on tree branches. The galls can be tennis ball sized or larger. At certain times of the year, they develop an orange gelatinous color and spores are discharged from the galls. This is all very cool for someone like me who's a little nerdy about fungi. You may be starting to wonder, where is this all going? You may not be quite so nerdy about fungi, or not quite so nerdy at all. You may be asking yourself, is there some bigger, more universal message we can learn from the rust fungi? Well, the British are a nation of tea drinkers, while the rest of Europe is a land of coffee drinkers because of a rust fungus. In the days of the empire, the British tried growing coffee in Ceylon, but the experiment was a total flop. Their crop was wiped out by coffee rust, which led to the British switching to tea because there was no place in the British Empire where coffee could be grown. To this day, coffee is grown at higher elevations where it cannot be reached by coffee rust spores. Well, that's an interesting historical factoid. It is not a universal lesson for humanity. I think the bigger lesson that we can learn from rust fungi is best illustrated by the Canadian experience of opening up the prairies for agriculture at the end of the 19th and the early 20th century. At that time, the Canadian government wanted to settle the prairies through the introduction of wheat farming. The problem was European wheat varieties were not hardy enough for the Canadian prairies. The winters were too cold for European winter wheat and the summers were too short for European spring. And European wheat varieties had little resistance to wheat stem and leaf rust fungi. The Canadian government, undeterred, invested in the new science of plant breeding. They developed a wheat breeding program to create wheat varieties that could be grown profitably on Canada's prairies. The program was an overwhelming success that led to the conversion of the prairies into nearly endless fields of billowing wheat creating those iconic images of Canadian golden wheat growing on the prairies from horizon to horizon. In one sense, this was very good. Wheat became an important cash crop, a reliable source of high quality food for millions of people, a source of wealth for Canadian wheat farmers, and the backbone for entire industries. On the other hand, in the conversion of the prairies into farmland, virtually all of Canada's grassland ecosystems were destroyed. With the loss of those grassland ecosystems, habitat for plants and animals were lost. The lesson, the big lesson the rust fungi are teaching us is that technology is a two-edged sword, or perhaps even a rusty double-headed axe. Technology can create economic miracles that benefit humankind and can destroy natural ecosystems and reduce biodiversity to the point of species extinction. New technologies such as rust fungus-resistant hardy wheat varieties cannot be introduced without considering their adverse as well as their beneficial effects. Imagine if, back when we were opening up the prairies, we planned to protect 10%, 20%, 50%, 
50% of the prairie grassland ecosystems to balance a sustainable supply of wheat with a sustainable environment. We would have protected species that are now lost forever. We would have maintained a healthier environment. If we listen to the rust fungi, in fact, if we listen to all the fungi, they're telling us unequivocally, a healthy economy is entirely dependent on a healthy environment. They're telling us protecting the environment protects humanity. We need to listen to the rust fungi. We need to listen to all the fungi. And now you know, what the fungi?